Welcome to 2023, where we have AI and chatbots revolutionizing the way we communicate and gather information. Among these cutting-edge technology, we have ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a advanced language model that is developed by OpenAI. And the aim of this video is to use the OpenAI's API to create a chatbot application for Android using Unity. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I want you to know that I was inspired by a video made by Sarge, wherein he spoke about or showed how to make NPCs using ChatGPT in Unity. I will leave a link for that video in the description if you are interested in it. However, for this video, I'll be making use of a package that was developed by someone called Rage Against the Pixel. If you are that person, then thank you for the package. All right, let's begin by creating a new project. So open up your Unity Hub, click on New Project. And here I'm using the Unity version 2021.3.12 F1. And I'd highly recommend you to use the same version as me. And the project name, I'm going to call it as chat GPT underscore Android and click on create project. So here we have our Unity project open. And the first thing that we want to do is set it up. So we'll click on file, build settings, select the Android as our platform and click on switch platform. Next, we'll click on player settings. We'll select uh, other settings here, scroll down and uh, we'll first check the override default package name. We will select the minimum level as 27. We'll select this to, we'll select the scripting backend to IL to CPP and we'll make sure to check ARM64. All right, so that's with the setting up the Unity project. Next, let's download the packages. Now to install the packages, click on Windows, Package Manager. Click on the settings icon over here. Click on Advanced Project Settings. Next, click on the Open UPM link that is provided in the description and that should take you to this web website over here. Now from this website, we need to copy the name, URL and scope and paste it inside our Unity editor. So let's copy the name first or maybe we can type it directly. I'm going to copy the URL, go back here. This is going to be open UPM URL. I'm going to paste it and go back to the website. It's com.openai. Let's copy that, paste it here. Click on the plus symbol and let's add the com.utilities as well. And then click on save. Go ahead and close this window. Next, select the drop down and click on Unity registry and or we can just click on my registry and here you can find the open AI. Select the open AI and click on install. All right, so with that, we have the packages installed. Next, we'll set up our scene. Now, the first thing that we want to do here is to get rid of the sky box. So click on windows, rendering, lighting, select the environment tab. We'll select the sky box material as none. Next, you can see that we have the background as blue in color. If you want to change it, you can select the main camera, select the background and set it to black or any other color of your choice. Next, let's add a canvas. So right click on your hierarchy, select UI. We will select canvas. Now in the canvas game object, you can find the canvas scalar component. Here we want to change the UI scaling mode from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. So this makes sure that irrespective of the size of your Android phone, the content inside the canvas gets scaled accordingly. Here just for uh, a better development process, I'm going to change it from free aspect to 2560 cross 1440 portrait and let's select the canvas here. Now we'll right click on the canvas and let's add a scroll view. So right click on canvas, select UI and select scroll view. Here, the first thing that we want to do is to anchor this to the left top corner. So we will anchor it to left top corner. And uh, actually let's, let us change the view here. And we want to scale it up. So we will have the width to be 720 and we will have the height to be 800. And let us take this up here. Probably I think a good value would be 500, so minus 500. Now I want to modify the scroll view as per my choice. Now this is totally up to you. You can leave it or you can do it as well. So I'm going to delete both of them. I don't want, I don't like how the scroll bar looks like. Next, we will select the scroll view. And here, I don't want it to be able to scroll in horizontal, only vertical. So I'm going to uncheck this. So next we will open the viewport and we have the content. Here we need to add a component which is called as content size fitter so the content size fitter make sure that the text that is generated from chat gpt is constrained within that box and does not overflow so we want to have the vertical fit as 
preferred size and horizontal fit as it is. Next, we'll click on add component and let us add the text mesh pro text UI component. Now we need to import text mesh pro. So let's do that. And then you can scroll down again. Here we need to adjust the text a little bit. So just for reference, we will call it as test and you can see it's white in color and the size is quite small. So we'll change the size to 55 and we will change from white to black. And yeah, we'll click on the extra settings as well. And we will have the left margin as 25. So that there's a slight gap. All right, so next we'll click right click on canvas again. And this time we want an input field. So UI will select input field text mesh pro. We need to scale this up. So we will scale it by three times, bring it slightly below. And we want to anchor this to the left bottom and position should be, I think 300, 400 and the width can be more we'll have it as 250 and we'll have the height as 35 and finally we need one last game object which is the ui button so we will select ui and add the ui button we will scale this up four times and bring it down here oh before that we need to make sure to anchor this to the bottom left as well and now we can change the position probably 150 yeah and we'll change the text from button to something like send. All right, so with that, we have set up our scene. Next, let's do some coding. In the project window, let's right click, create a new C -sharp script and call it as chat GPT. Double click to open it and I will see you in Visual Studio. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we want to do here is to get rid of the default code. Now let's add all the libraries that we'll be using. The first one is going to be using unityengine.ui. So it's going to be unityengine.ui. Next, we need to add using OpenAI. We also need to use uh, OpenAI models. So it's going to be using OpenAI.models. And finally, we need Text Mesh Pro. So that's going to be using Text Mesh Pro. Now let's declare the variables that require referencing. The first variable that we need for, that has to be referenced is going to be the button. So it's going to be serialized field private button and we'll name the variable as button. Next, we need to reference the input field as well. So serialized field private text mesh pro input field and we'll name this as input field itself. And finally, serialized field private text mesh pro text. Now this is going to be the display text that's going to be shown on your screen. So we'll call it as display text. All right, so now let's declare some more variables that we'll be using in the script. The first variable that we need is to store the user's input. So that's going to be a private of type string and it will name the variable as user input. Next, we need a variable to store the chat history. So that is going to be private string chat history. Next, we need a variable that will store the identity of chat GPT. So it's going to be private string AI identity. And we can declare the identity uh, right here. So we can say act as an AI that responds to questions. And finally, we need a variable that can store the OpenAI's API. So that's going to be private OpenAI client and we'll call this as API. Now let's call the start function. So let's open the start method. And in here, the first thing that we want to do is add the AI identity to the chat history. So we will write it as chat history plus equal to AI identity. And we want to make sure whatever we add next goes to the next line. So backslash n. Next, we need to create a new API for the client, for the open AI client. So it's going to be API is going to be equal to new open AI client and it's going to be new open AI authentication, open the brackets, open the quotes, but we are going to leave it blank for now. Later on, I'll show you how to generate the key and add it inside here. And finally, we need to add a listener to the button. So it's going to be button dot on click dot add listener. And this is going to call the function ask AI. All right, so now let's go ahead and create the function for ask AI. Now this function is going to be an async function. So which means that we need to call this as private async void ask ai i will tell you in just a bit as to why we are using async operation now here once we click the button the first thing that we want to do is disable the button and disable the input field so we can write it as button dot enable is equal to false same thing with the input field next we want to get the user input and add it into the chat history we can write it as user input is going to be equal to the input field dot text and then the chat history plus equal to now let us use uh, string interpolation here 
So it's going to be ampersand and in here we can add the user input, add a full stop and let's go to the next line. All right, so now we need to show on the display that the chat GPT is working. So for that, we'll call this as display text dot text and add a few dots to it is equal to. And we also want to clear the input field. So it's going to be input field dot text is going to be equal to blank. All right, so now we can go ahead and generate the result. So for that, we'll declare the type as var and we'll call the variable as result. It is going to be equal to the API dot completion endpoint dot create completion async. And in here, we need to provide the chat history. Next, we need to mention uh, the maximum number of tokens. So the max tokens is going to be, so you can have max tokens basically tells you how long the reply has to be, or how many words you want the reply to be. For now, I'm going to put it as 200. It can go up to 2000 plus, there's some exact value. I will leave a link for the documentation in the description. You can have a look at it. And this is something that you can play around with as well. And finally, we need to tell about the model. So the model is going to be model dot. Now here we can see that there are a lot of models. There is ADA, Babbage, Curie, DaVinci and default. I'm not sure what the differences are since most of them are using DaVinci. I think it's the fastest. I'm going to use DaVinci as well. All right. So there's one thing that I missed here and that is the await keyword. So here we need to add await. Now this is the reason why we are using the async keyword here is because we want to wait till this generates the result and once we get the result only then we want to execute the following code. So what do we want to do once we get the result? We want to display it on the display text. We want to add it to the chat history and once that's done we want to enable these buttons as well. So let's do that. So this is going to be display text dot text is going to be equal to the result dot to string and then we have to add it to the chat history as well plus equal to again we'll be using string interpolation result dot to string and then we want to make sure that this goes to the next line and finally we will enable the button dot enable equal to true and we will enable the input function as well all right so we are almost done we just need to add the authentication key and now i'll show you how you can get that to create an authentication key, you need to visit the openai.com slash API website. I will leave a link for this in the description. Once you're here, if you do not have an account, then you'll have to sign up. If you already have an account, then you can log in. Once you're successfully logged in, click on your account, click on view API keys, and in here, you can create a new security. key. Now, make sure that you do not share your security key with anybody else. So once you click on this, you will get the key. You can copy it, and then you can go back to your script and paste it inside here within the codes. Save the script and then go back to Unity. So here we are back in Unity. Let's right click on the hierarchy and create an empty game object. We'll call this as AI. Select the game object and add the chat GPT script to it. Let us drag and drop the button, drag and drop the input field and let us drag and drop the display text as well. Select the display text here, that's the content and we'll remove the test that you had written so that it's blank, we don't want anything there. And that's about it. So let's press play and test it out here in our Unity editor. Who are you? It says I'm an artificial intelligence designed to answer questions. So now if I go back to the script and change its identity, let's see what happens. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio and I'm going to change the AI identity. I'm going to say act as a human who works as an engineer. So act as a human who works as an engineer we'll save the script and let's go back into unity let's plus play and now ask the same question who are you and here you can see that we have a different answer it says i'm a, I, my name is david and i'm an engineer i work with a variety of team organization blah 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 so and so so the identity that you set is the way the chat gpt is going to respond all right, so moving on to the last part of the video wherein we build and test it out on our device. Now, before you do that, make sure that you have the developer mode enabled on this and you have connected this to your PC. Once you have that, you can click on file, build settings and add the open scene if you haven't added it already. Click on build and run. Let us create a new folder in here and let us call this as builds and you can call the app anything. I'm going to call it as test for now and click on save. We need to save the scene as well. Yep. All right. I will see you once it's done building. All right. So the app has been successfully built onto my device. Let's test it out. Now, before you test it out, make sure that your device is connected to a stable internet connection. Now, my first question is going to be simple. I'm going to ask, who are you? 
it says it's an AI created to answer your questions. All right, then tell me what's Unity. It's a cross-platform game engine, blah, blah, blah. All right, so probably one more question, something like how do I install it? To install Unity, you can visit the website, download there, select the platform, and so and so. All right, so with that, we have developed a chatbot for our Android device, which makes use of the open AI to respond to all your questions. Now, if you like this video or if you found this video to be helpful, then I'd highly, highly appreciate it if you can leave a like and subscribe. It will help us to make more videos just for you. If something does not work, just let us know in the comments below and we'll help you out with it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.